Okay guys, welcome back to another Spiral Flow Ropes video. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about beginner's tips, okay? And the reason for that is because I see a lot of beginners making the same old mistakes and it's holding their rope flow back. But the good news is they're really easy to correct. So if you just follow me through this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid those mistakes. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about, guys, is the weight of your rope. And the reason why this is really important for a beginner is because as a beginner, you don't wanna be choosing a rope which is too heavy. Reason is because you're gonna stunt your progress, it's gonna be far too heavy for you to master the techniques, and it's just not a good idea, okay? You can progress onto that later, and you can turn it into more of a workout at a later stage, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. But for now, as a beginner, we just wanna be learning the basic techniques. We wanna get used to the rope, how it feels, and then later on, we can look at potentially getting the heavier ropes. So I will just recommend, don't let your ego interfere too early on in your rope flow journey. You wanna be picking a lighter rope uh, as a beginner, okay? So at Spiral Flow Ropes, we currently sell these two varieties of rope. We've got the Thunderbolt V2. This weighs approximately 450 grams. So it's the lighter option of the two. It's more suitable for beginners. It's gonna give you uh, much less stress on your body as you're flowing. It's gonna be less strenuous and it's gonna be ideal for learning all the techniques, okay? We've also got the Inferno rope, which weighs approximately 550 grams. So it doesn't sound like a lot more, but when it comes to these ropes, you will definitely feel it. So it's not to say beginners can't use this sort of rope, but just bear in mind, it will be more challenging. So the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is the length of your rope and why that's important for a beginner. So when you get your flow rope, it's gonna come like this and the length of it might be too long for certain people. But the reason we do that is to accommodate for taller people to allow them to find the suitable length for their rope. The reason why you want to find the ideal length is because if the rope's too long, it's going to interfere with your flow. It's not going to flow properly. It won't be very comfortable at all. It's going to stunt your progress. If the rope's also too short, that is going to be quite challenging for beginners. Ideally, you want to find somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to show you how to find that ideal length right now. So if you take your rope and step on the middle of it, pull both sides of it up and see how far it comes. You can see mine comes to the bottom of my ribs there, which is a little bit too long because as you can see now, as I swing the rope, the rope is hitting the floor quite a lot there. It's slapping the floor, and this means it's gonna lose momentum and lose the flow. So the solution for that, if your rope is too long, as you can see there, I'm just gonna tie a simple knot in one end of the rope, just like so, and that is gonna reduce the length of the rope by approximately 15 centimeters. So let's have a look where the rope comes to. As you can see there, the rope is coming just above my hips, which for me, I find is ideal and will probably suit most of you. So just to demonstrate, as you can see, I'm flicking the rope there at hip height and the bottom of the rope is just touching the floor, which won't impede our flow. It's not gonna affect it too much. For me, I find this is ideal. However, if you'd like to make the rope even shorter, for example, for shorter people or for the added challenge, then you can simply put a figure eight knot in the rope. I'm just gonna make a loop there, twist it round, and then thread that handle back through the loop, pull it tight, and jobs are good. Uh, so when it comes to flowing with a rope of this length, you will find that it might be a bit more challenging, and the reason for that is because certain moves will require greater mobility and range of motion in the joints. So to recap, just above hip height would be suitable for most, this is how I tend to tie my knots with a single knot in each end. So moving on, the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is something they call the cardinal laws of rope flow. And this is a really common mistake what I see people do. And it's all to do with the direction that the rope is traveling in. And it just leaves a lot of people scratching their heads as to why things aren't working out, why it doesn't feel smooth. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that now. So the easiest way to understand this is to picture yourself standing on a compass 
and as I'm doing underhand, that direction for argument's sake is going to be south and behind me when I turn around and go into overhand is going to be north. This means that the rope is only ever going to travel on that north-south line and I want to try and keep the rope to that line as much as possible. And so when it comes to turning my body I'm simply going to turn around the rope to face the other direction and that is going to put me in the overhand patterns. And the halfway point as I'm facing side on, so either east or west, that is what we call the propeller position. And other patterns do make use of this position such as the dragon roll, the dragon hug and a few others like that. And so once you've tried it with one hand then you can move on to doing it with two hands. You're simply going to perform a matador's wheel pattern in the underhand, switch into the overhand when you feel ready. Remembering to keep the rope on that north-south line at all times. Take it nice and slow. And when you feel ready, you can also throw in some dragon rolls. And notice how when I perform the dragon roll, my body is always going to be side on because it is a transition move from one direction to another. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is your posture and bone stacking as well when we're doing rope flow. Now the reason why I wanted to address this is because I have seen some people who are beginners at rope flow and they're not really paying the proper attention to their posture when they're learning all the techniques, okay? So they could be learning a technique like this, which is all well and good, but their body might be bending over like this and not really promoting good posture or good biomechanics, which is not what we want to see, okay? We want to promote good posture in the body the reason for that is because your posture is directly related to how your body feels, to the pains in your body. In general, the better your posture, the less pains you're going to feel in your body, the better you're going to feel in general. And in case you didn't know, your posture is also directly linked to your mental health as well. So the better your posture, the more confident you're going to be in life and your well-being in general is just going to be a lot better. Okay, so. I've devised a little checklist for you guys to run through whilst you're doing rope flow to just think about and make sure you've got all these things in check and you should be absolutely sweet. Okay, so I'm going to run you through those now guys. Let's have a look. So we're going to start from the ground and work our way up. So the feet are the first thing and ideally they're going to be pointing straight forward and we want a little bit of ground tension between the feet as well. So by that I mean we're going to pinch the ground slightly with our feet to make sure we've got the stability and the adductors are switched on. There you can see I'm lightly bending my knees, softly bending my knees, which is what we want. Uh, my hips are also nice and in line. My tailbone is not tucked under too much and also my lower back is not arching too much either. Way to prevent that is the next point, which is our abdominals. We're gonna draw in the navel to keep all the abdominals nice and tight and also support the thoracic spine, which is the next point. And we wanna keep our chest nice and proud, push the chest out and get some thoracic extension as well. Breathe into the rib cage and expand the chest outwards. So same thing when it comes to drag and roll, I'm gonna keep everything in alignment. As I said, I'm gonna pinch the ground with my feet. I'm going to softly bend my knees on the swing. I'm going to retract that navel to keep the abdominals nice and tight and support the rest of the body. And I'm going to work on pushing my rib cage out to get that thoracic extension. So by bone stacking, it basically means that the body is going to be in alignment and my head is going to be pretty much above my foot on the floor. And as you can see me stepping there, I'm keeping my hips above my feet and my head above my hips as well. So all in one line as we're doing the locomotive exercises. So my next tip for you guys is to try and go smooth rather than fast as a beginner, okay? Your speed is gonna come over time, but as a beginner, ideally you wanna really be trying to master your techniques first before you go and start doing the cardio workouts and that sort of thing. So we really wanna dial in the technique an example of that will give you with the drag and roll, you really want to be mastering the drag and roll both sides like this, there and the other side. Make sure you can get it perfect both sides before we then go and start doing drag and switches. And everything else that comes with it, okay? So that's my sixth tip for you guys. Make sure you Focus on being smooth rather than fast as a beginner. 
So my last tip that I'm gonna to touch upon today, guys, is similar to the last one, and that is that you drill exercises in isolation before you go on to free flow and integration and all that sort of thing, okay? The reason for that is similar to the previous point, and that is that it's gonna be quite hard for a beginner to start integrating exercises together and free flow, that sort of thing. You might end up hitting yourself a bit more, and we don't really wanna do that. We wanna try and drill the exercises in isolation first, then we can start playing with them a little bit, start exploring new possibilities and that sort of thing. So I'll give you a little example and that is with the cheetah's tail. Cheetah's tail looks like this. Okay, so what I'd recommend guys is that you master the cheetah's tail in isolation first, make sure you can do it perfectly. Then you can start playing around with other things such as entries into cheetah's tail exits like that and all that sort of thing so that's my final tip for you guys make sure you master the exercise in isolation then you can start free flowing and start expanding your flow that way i recommend highly recommend to all of you to check out my beginners tutorial series what i've got on youtube loads of exercises for you to get started with on there explains everything in good detail goes through it nice and slowly have a look at that and then once you've mastered those guys you can start free flowing and that sort of thing and i'm sure your rope float is just going to go through the roof okay so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in another video <laughs>